Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at designing reports using Liberty Reports for Sage 100 Contractor. The process of building a report starts in Excel because we're using an Excel based reporting tool. So I'll start up Microsoft Excel and in the example that I'm going to use I'm going to build a report that allows me to specify a department and then I can see all of the jobs that are in that department and some information about each one of those jobs. So to start off with, I'm going to identify a place in the report where someone could type in a department number. And I'll use department number one uh, to start with. Okay, so so far this is simply Excel, right? But next I'd like to see the name of the department, and that would come from my database. So I'm going to click on the Liberty Reports tab, and I'm going to use the function wizard to look up the name of the department. Now when I click on the function wizard, this is the first time I'm adding any Liberty Reports functions to this particular workbook, and so Liberty Reports wants to know which database I want to use with my workbook. So I'll select Sage 100 Contractor, and then identify the specific database, in this case the sample company, provide my login credentials, And what I see next is a list of the functions that are available to me. These functions are much like the functions that you're used to already in Excel. For example, you're probably already used to the sum function, which in Excel lets you sum up uh, uh, values that are in a range of cells. The sum function with Liberty Reports is very similar, except that we're summing up values out of a particular column in a database table. And likewise, the lookup function is much like the VLOOKUP function in Excel. Uh, the, DB, the DBLOOKUP function is very similar in that we're finding a row in a table and returning a value from a, a specific column. That's the function I'm going to use in this case because I want to look up the name of the particular department that I've selected. Okay, so I'll now next, next what I see is a list of all of the uh, tables that are in the Sage 100 Contractor database. And notice that the table names use the uh, uh, nice friendly captions that are easier to understand, but I, but I do still have the internal name shown on the right. To find a table, I can simply press Control F, type some part of the table name if I know it, and it finds that table in the list for me. In this case, GL Department is what I want. So I'll click Next. And now I can identify the columns that I want to look up. In this case, I'm looking up the department name. And notice over on the right, I see a little preview of the types of values that are in that column so that I can very quickly identify whether this is what I'm looking for or not. Next, I need to tell Liberty Reports which row in that table to select and that, that's going to be based on the department number. So I'm going to click my cell selector, click on the cell that contains the department number, and then click Next. I don't want Liberty Reports to include column captions in this case, so I'll uncheck that box and then click Finish. So notice that now I have in cell C3 a formula that includes a DB lookup function. And that function goes out to the database and pulls in the value that I want. If I change the department ID, that formula recalculates and shows the other department name. Okay, so so far so good. Next I want to see a list of all of the jobs that are in that department. So I'm going to click on the query wizard to get that. The query wizard allows me to build a query that returns one or more rows of information. Okay, so once again I see a list of all the tables to pick from. Now, notice that it skipped over the step of having me identify which database that I want to use. That option is still there if I wanted to click back and pick a different database at this point to build a query from, from some other data source. 
I'm going to scroll down to the PM section of tables. That's for pro project management. So all my project management tables are grouped together with that prefix. And I'll find PM job. And now I'll start identifying some of the columns that I want to include in the report. I'll include the job number, the job name, and the client number, and the supervisor number. I can also rearrange these a little bit too. So if I wanted to put the supervisor number first, I simply drag that over. And now I rearrange those columns. Okay, so, so far though, what I'm seeing is simply the ID numbers. So I'm seeing the supervisor number and the client number. So unless I've memorized my entire client list, which is unlikely, I wouldn't know what the names of those clients are. I'm going to show two methods for getting the client name onto the report. So in the first case, I'm going to, I'm going to actually focus on um, just doing this within the query, the query wizard itself. And in the second case, I'm going to add it after the fact. <clears throat> So I'll click on add more tables because the client name is actually in a different table. It's over in the receivables client table. So now I'm seeing a list of all the tables in the database. And if I scroll up to the AR tables, then I find the AR receivable client table, which is where the client name is stored. If I expand that, and then click on the long name field. Then notice that it drops in the long name. Now if I don't want it to say long name on my report, I can change the property of that column. Just like that. And now it shows the, the desired caption. Okay, so so far so good. Uh, next, I'm going to go, go on to the next step. And here I want to filter my job list so that I'm only seeing the jobs that are within the department that I selected. So I'll click on Add Condition. Now I see a list of all of the columns that are in the job table. And I can scroll down and find the department field. And then I'm going to say, I want to, the condition is going to say, include all jobs where the department number is equal to and not a literal value but rather a cell reference and the cell reference again is going to be going back to cell B3 and next time I want to add a condition to exclude closed jobs so if I click on add condition again click on job status, say not equal to. In this case, I will use a, a literal value. And I'll exclude jobs with a status of five. Okay, so there's my set of conditions. And with the condition builder, I can add lots of conditions. I can, I can group them also with ands and or, con, or logic uh, and tie them to uh, cell values and whatnot. Okay, the next step uh, doesn't really apply to this particular report, uh, but I'll give a brief explanation as to what this step is for. If I was building a report, say, off of job cost and detailed transactions, but I didn't want to see each individual transaction, but I wanted to roll those numbers up uh, to, say, maybe one row per employee or one row per vendor uh, that contained summary values, that's what this option allows me to do. It's basically take detailed information and roll it up by some kind of uh, designation that I that I specify, like by cost code, uh, combination of cost code and vendor, etc. Okay, the next step I can identify a sort order. So I'm going to tell this query to sort by job number, and I can have multiple sort orders in here as well. And on the last step, then I just have some options that control how the query is going to refresh in the future. Uh, the, the default option is to insert it so that I can refresh it. The second option would simply import the data 
and that becomes just static information that can't be imported uh, at a later time. I'm going to go ahead and click on Finish. Okay, and so now I see the data that I selected in my query being displayed. Now I mentioned earlier that I'm going to show another method for bringing in additional information, or rather related information, to the query. And in the example that I'm going to use, I'll use the supervisor ID. I want to show the supervisor's name in this case. And this happens to be their employee number. Well, the employee number is all that I have in this table, but the employee number and their and employee's name is over in the employee table. So I'll insert a column. Make it wide enough to show the name. And now I'm going to go back to my function wizard. And just like I just like I did before, I'm going to use the lookup wizard. And this time, identifying the PR employee table. And I'll select the employee's last name. And I could select mul multiple columns here if I wanted to. And then for the employee number, I'll click the cell selector, pick my first supervisor ID, and in the options then I'm going to tell it to include column captions and to fill down formulas, which means that it's going to insert a dblookup function and then fill that down onto each row of my query. So I'll click finish and there it is. So I have a dblookup function on each row. And as I change my department number, so if I change this to department 2 and then click refresh, notice that the number of dblookup functions decreases because rows went away. And if I change it back to 1 and then refresh, the dblookup functions propagate down still to all the rows in the query. Okay, let's add one more piece of information to the report, and that would be the, the job to date cost for the for each job. So to do that, I'm going to again use the function wizard. In this case, I'm going to use the sum function. And the job to date cost would be over in the job cost table. Now the job cost table provides a detailed accounting of every job cost transaction, which I don't want to see that level of detail. I just want to see the total for each job. And that's what the sum function allows me to do. So I'll select which column I want to sum up. In this case, it's going to be the cost column. And then I'll add a condition so that for a given row, I'm only getting the cost that relates to, to the specific job on that row. So I'll add a condition that says where the job is equal to the job number for that row. And again, I might want to consider adding another condition that would exclude any, any transactions that have been voided. Again, I could include additional uh, conditions, including things like a date range or a cutoff date, and things like that if I wanted to do that. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. I'm going to accept these options so that I get the column caption included, and so that it fills down my sum function automatically. Okay, and there I have it. And then from here, I just start applying what I already know about Excel. So I can format that value with uh, the proper number of decimals and whatnot. I could change the column caption as well if I don't like what it put in. And I can also utilize functions that I already know in Excel, like the sum function to get a total. So adding totals is really easy. You just apply what you already know about Excel. Uh, I could also see perhaps a percentage of each job as compared to the total just by doing a simple calculation like that. Format that as a percent. Copy it down. Okay. And then I could also add some additional elements to the report for simply a report navigation. So for example, if 
I go to the Data tab and I click on Filter, now I have filter drop-downs at the top of each column caption. So if I wanted to see all of the jobs for Wilson, I can very quickly filter it and see that. Notice that the total still shows the total for all jobs. So I'm going to change that to be, instead of a sum function, I'm going to use Excel's subtotal function. And now as I change my filter, the total reflects the total of what I'm currently showing on the report. Okay, and so this is an example of just a very basic report being built, uh, not a whole lot of steps, and again we're applying a lot of what we already know about Excel in order to achieve formatting and filtering and some basic formulas uh, to, get to perform the calculations that we want and things like that. From here you would add uh, report uh, or page layout, you could add uh, charting and graphing if you wanted to, uh, fonts and colors, etc, etc. So, um, this is a this is a, so this concludes our, our demonstration of the designer functions. Uh, again, the whole concept here is that you are leveraging what you already know about Excel. We're just giving you some additional tools that you can use to pull data from your Sage 100 contractor database into Excel and then work with your data more dynamically. If you have any questions, please contact Event One Software or your Sage business partner. Thank you. Thank you.